Welcome, Left Reckoning patrons, to another uh, premium edition uh, of our our material here. Uh, with me, as always, David Griscom. Hello, David. How's it going, brother? Uh, it's going well. And uh, joining us uh, today is one of my favorite authors and uh, sort of right wing watchers. I, that's that phrase. I've I've keep using that, and I don't really like it. But um, Corey Pine, author of Live, Work, 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 Die. A uh, great book on Silicon Valley, uh, where you say you don't really go undercover of Silicon Valley, but you, it's sort of, uh, um, how do you describe it, Corey? A uh, mad cat misadventure. I saw, uh, I saw <laughs> some, some reviewers described it as sort of an anthropological look. Um, I did go, not undercover, but uh, sort of mingled uh, fly on the wall style in Silicon Valley for six or eight months or so and uh, to get material. So anthropological is a good word, I guess. Yeah. And we'll, uh, we'll circle back to some of that when we get to uh, uh, one of our favorite topics of Peter Thiel. Uh, but before we do the, uh, the sort of uh, occasion for this is I've been getting in hot water with part of our audience because I have a dismissive uh, attitude towards uh, UFOs. Now I will put this into two contexts for me that explain this. One is it's sort of a God that failed for me. I was a big uh, X-Files fan uh, growing up in the 2000s, literally to the point of when we first got internet, I went to FBI.gov or whatever and tried to look for the X-Files section, <laughs> see if I could maybe get in like a young uh, recruits uh, section. Um, I, I loved it. I loved like uh, the sci-fi channel, all that stuff. And then I got into... And where my current sort of like James Randi uh, challenge to uh, the UFO community is um, the skeptic community, which has um, led me to this, my current position now, which is like, I want to see this thing, these stuff, this stuff get registered outside of, you know, these official military channels. Um, and until it does, I'm not super interested. However, that, and that, that has kind of kept me where I am for the last like 10 years or so, I guess. There's a lot of buzz about this now, and uh, there is one person I trust uh, to give us the lowdown on what uh, people should be looking out for, and uh, and that is Corey. So, Corey, uh, with that sort of uh, introduction, uh, what are your thoughts? Well, I mean, there was a lot of anticipation about this report that came out in late June. Um, it was requested by Congress. And it was overseen by the director of national intelligence or their office, which is pretty much the highest intelligence um, agency in, in the U.S. government. Um, and if you read the, it, the unclassified version is only like uh, nine pages or something like that. Mm. Um, and, you know, there's not a big clear headline to come out of it, except I would say that you know, it's the assessment of the U.S. government that UFOs that appear to defy the laws of physics are a real phenomenon and need more investigation. So, um, you know, how people react to that news is all over the map. I think it's, um, I think it's pretty significant finding, and I think that there's potential for scientific advances of a. Uh, breakthrough and, and really necessary at this time in our in our society's relationship with the planet at this time I think it's um, something important to look at so that's my quick take on the optimist side or the um, the pro sort of technology side I do get people that um, ask me like yeah why would aliens even be interested in coming to us and to me mm. it's like well it's it, if as long as we're entertaining uh, uh, sort of this sort of stuff, the idea that they would have some awareness of like, oh, these motherfuckers are cooking their planet. <laughs> Maybe we should do some sort of intervention um, and technology share. Like, I actually like that argument isn't good for me. Um, to me, like, I guess my question is like, when we think about the realm of possibility here, like to me, when I see a lot of these videos, they strike me as a lot of the stuff I saw um, growing up, which purported to be UFOs, but it was like, you know, a, a tracking of a weather balloon across like a, like a gimbal mounted camera and there's a fast moving background. Like the, the, the videos don't, don't really do it for me. Um, I guess. Um, and because I, like, I guess the other thing that seems possible is that there's some sort of aerial phenomenon, like a solar flare type situation or something like that, that that's what these things are registering. Is that too simplistic um, for the kind of 
um, what we know of what they're looking at to like for it to be like weather balloons or some sort of magnetic high atmosphere stuff or does this stuff this this seem to be like control because the, and the other thing I just want to throw out there is I remember like five years ago there was this hypersonic flight experiments going on with the U.S. government and they lost track of something going like. 13,000 miles an hour or something like that. I don't know if you recall that, but like these, this is the realm, I guess, like, I'm just curious what you think this might point to if, even if it's like a 10, 5% chance. Well, I mean, I guess it depends on which cases we're talking about. I mean, I think as far as I know, the most uh, interesting and clear videos haven't yet been declassified. So the videos that have come out, I agree. So in some ways they're a bit underwhelming. Um, but the cases that were examined in this report, uh, I think it was something like 144 cases that they looked at since 2004, all involving, you know, U.S. government employees and equipment. And I think 80 of those uh, were tracked on multiple sensors. So it's not just, you know, whatever cockpit videos we've seen. It's the fact that multiple radar and other sensors are tracking these things. So we know that they're like and those systems have been checked. So, you know. Uh, malfunctions are possible in some cases, but when you've got multiple sensors, they all have to be failing in the same way somehow to track these things um, if you assume that they're not there. So I think, you know, the thing is they're there. It just becomes a question of what is it? And the report never mentions aliens. I think I have um, some of my notes from it here. They had five categories, and I think these are reasonable categories that they put the... Um, the things into um, one was airborne clutter, another was natural atmospheric phenomena, another was U.S. government or industry developmental programs, which would I guess be uh, America's own secret stuff. Right. Another was foreign adversary systems and what they called a catch-all other bin, and I guess that would be your aliens. Right. Right. Um, so I think you know from the variety of weird things that people see in the sky, those are reasonable categories to put it into. The ones that everybody wants to know about are the other. Um, which, you know, I'm not sure, I, I think pe people, you know, looking in good faith, um, I think have examined these, uh, those edge cases pretty closely and just haven't been able to come up with an answer. Mm -hmm. So, you know, in the spectrum of possibility, um, I, you know, I think we should consider that it's some sort of intelligent non-human intelligence operating these things but it could be you know it could be some ph physical phenomenon that we, we don't understand yet yeah, uh, yeah because it's not just like they're going really fast i mean they go fast they stop on a dime they go down through the water they come back up from the water they do things that just shouldn't be possible uh and again those, those are not the majority of cases but they're enough that this is you know this issue has become public to this point so yeah like you know i mean that's the thing is i uh, i wonder um the two sort of uh, case studies one is ball lightning which i always have kind of looked into and like as a phenomenon that people aren't really sure they can confirm it but there's a lot of stories about it and, like maybe it occurred to me like maybe this is some sort of activity of that but you but you seem to think there's some intelligent control um indicated in like the patterns of movement the other thing that it brings to mind is i have family members who found out later that they were working on parts for the stealth bomber uh right. and they had no idea at the time they were just like they had, they had like one kind of component that they made in isolation of everything else and wow. that seems to me like th that if there's a lot of stuff coming out I, like i i mean It'd be nice, I guess. I would love it if it's so, ours. I don't know. I am not, I'm not a big fan of this theory that you're proposing because uh -huh. I think it just substitutes one conspiracy theory for another. Okay. Um, because if, if you want to believe it's U.S. government stuff, you have to believe that this whole report and all the hubbub is just some kind of psychological operation to confuse us. Mm -hmm. It'd be a weird way to do it, for one, to announce that you have a vulnerability to your most advanced military hardware that can't keep up with these things and are constantly being buzzed by them. I mean, it's just weird to announce a vulnerability like that without coming out right afterward and saying, okay, here's our fix for it. Mm -hmm. um, but I actually, if you read between the lines in the report, um, while the, the National Intelligence Office was able to get information from pretty much every agency and every part of the military, the Air Force was not very forthcoming with information. And this has been something that even the U.S. Navy pilots um, 
whose you know encounters in 2004 became famous a few years ago um, we're talking about is that Air Force personnel came on their ship and confiscated their logs so I think there's actually if reading between the lines of this report and just with all the other uh, evidence that's out there it, it is possible that that maybe some part of the US government has technology or a contractor perhaps has technology that the rest of the government for whatever reason isn't privy to uh, so you can't rule it out. I mean, the report doesn't rule it out necessarily. I think it, however, if this, if that's what's actually going on here, um, just speaking as a journalist, I think it's a huge scandal that we need to know more about, uh, because these things have been buzzing among other things, they've been buzzing us military aircraft. So that seems like a pretty reckless way to behave if it's some other part of the u.s government yeah. you know that has this stuff i mean you know uh, if you ever spent time with people in the air force or the navy you know there is like a big uh, rivalry, <laughs> rivalry. <laughs> no i agree or if it's like like eric prince or something has got some sort of his hands on something and he's like yeah um that that would be another concern i have or you know like i just the other thing is i thought it, it like maybe china's got something or something right I mean, again, I think it would be a weird way for them to demonstrate this technology. I mean, Putin has apparently in Russia made some advances in hypersonic tech, and they haven't been shy about demonstrating it or bragging about it. Sure. So, I mean, if it's a secret program, whether the U.S. or some other country, I mean, I think it's important that we find out what's actually going on and bring it to light. Because if for a couple of reasons, one, I mean, there's sort of a military security angle to it, like. Uh, you know, if the U.S. doesn't have air superiority over its own airspace, I mean, who does? That's a question. Um, and if, you know, if this technology is as miraculous as the, uh, you know, now verified accounts sort of suggest, then what what solutions to the energy crisis might be out there, you know, already developed that we don't have access to? I mean, what what is the political sort of ramifications of that kind of secrecy? Yeah. So I well that's a, that's a good point because like you said like if this is the government doing it as an elaborate psyop, which like I still like think like oh here's we invented a vulnerability and we need to spend more money, um, right? Like then that is like you said like that's a huge story and something that we need to get to the bottom of and follow through on. Yeah, I I mean I'm with you though. I don't necessarily trust the government or the military to do all of this. But one one good thing that's come out of the report is they say you know we need to get more of the civilian scientific community engaged in this, and you know that's going to probably require more government spending. But the government spends money on all kinds of ridiculous stuff. Uh, I don't think this is that ridiculous, yeah. <laughs> especially when you consider the consequences. So. And it also um, strikes me that it might have just secondary effects of like, we have all this space junk floating around that like, um, people like Elon Musk are positioning themselves to all as like part of the problem, but also the solutions to like space, um, litter, basically all this, um, which I, I, this comes from me, uh, uh, listening to Neil deGrasse Tyson's podcast a little bit uh, too often, <laughs> but like, like we have too much junk already, uh, just in orbit. And it's becoming a liability. Um, and maybe we can dual purpose, you know, look out for UFOs. And uh, I, I don't know. There's some benefit to that, too. But um, anything else you guys want to say on top of UFOs before we bring it back down to Earth? <laughs> Nothing, David, really? Come on. I, I mean, I, I for me, I, I I sit on the sidelines. and I let you, you guys debate this one out because, I mean, I'm obviously interested in it um in a general sense but for me my eyes roll over when i see most of these reports come out and it's just because i've been so poisoned i think by the the media at this point like every documentary on netflix is some like true alien story um and like so whenever i see whenever i see anything new come out i just like i immediately just look the other way i guess cry i wolf just sort of problem. train myself what it's a cry wolf problem basically <laughs> I'm I'm disappointed. I'm like you. Know, I'm disappointed with kind of all the media that's out there about this. So, I mean, my next book, but my next book proposal is supposed to be on this topic. So, uh, hopefully, I can be a corrective there in some ways. But there's just a lot of trash. I mean, it's absolutely. And I think, fascinating. What's that? No, I was just saying it's absolutely fascinating, and I, you know, I'd love to watch those documentaries just like the next person too. But it's just like I treat it as like fantasy. Um, I, I wouldn't be surprised if there's a reason for that too, in all honesty. 
it's 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 pretty interesting because this is an area where the government simultaneously seems to be saying like you need to pay attention to this folks and also there's nothing to see here yeah so there's mixed messages coming out i think the skeptic community is not necessarily covering itself in glory these past few years and the way it's approached this issue. I think that they've relied on a lot of sort of arguments and, and sort of knee-jerk responses left over from the 90s and haven't really engaged with the new information that's come out. I think that's a problem with the skeptic community generally, to be honest. Um, I think like th their uh, arguments on the JFK assassination are all basically like, um, Vincent Bugliosi, Dealey Plaza, um, minutia about technicalities and trajectories and stuff like that. And, and just zero like interest in getting into like CIA connections or state connections or organized crime and stuff like that. Just no, just incurious. Um, yeah. and, and I, I, and I, I feel like I could come up with another example, um, of them. And, and there's a version to this sort of like, a, like outside of technical debunking like there's a there's a comfort in having something debunked we see this all the time like the right way the right wing will try to like say debunk yeah. this or that right like like debunked means you can relax about something and like a little bit of of uh of uh um psychological discomfort can be alleviated because you heard somebody else say no that's not just don't worry about that um, and I think that that is probably why I gravitated from uh, the skeptic atheist sort of community to more like a leftist Marxist one, to be honest. I, I think that, uh, you know, I, I agree with everything you just said. Um, you know, I used to I used to be on the sort of edges of that sort of skeptic community and, and watched it turn more and more reactionary. I think if you accept that there's maybe um, government or industry disinformation efforts on the ufos are real side there's also similar efforts on the they're not real side so yeah, yeah. um you know for some for some reason there's certain topics like this that it does seem like there are impediments erected to finding out the truth in a very systematic way mm -hmm. and you wonder why that is i mean the simplest explanation is that the government does have secret programs uh, advanced aerial technology, among other things, that it wants to, you know, it wants to keep secret. So anything that's in the sky and un unexplained, you know, or, or difficult to explain or just looks different than everything else is maybe a th exposure of that is maybe a threat of exposing some other program off to the side. They've got just, uh, you know, by virtue of them being aerial phenomena. So, but. I mean, while while we're on this, because I, I I mean, I think you make a really good point about how the uh, you know if, if the government is trying to you know cover up you know their their abilities to do things, they're doing a very you know they're doing a funny job of it. But could you just like in your mind, what is the upside for the government in sort of suppressing information that we have contact or like regular, if not contact, but just like regular footage of like UFOs visiting the planet? Well, that's the weird thing is because when that when that New York Times story came out in 2017 and revealed they had this secret program, I mean, part of the part of the part of the thing that made that story so big was the fact that it implied that there has been a cover up previous, you know, uh, to to this disclosure. Uh, and, and this report that came out in June does the same thing. I mean, it suggests that there was a cover up. So apart from wanting to keep secret tech secret, I mean, it's it's open to speculation why they would do that. <clears throat> I mean, one um, uh, one thing that uh, the guy that ran that program, Lou Elizondo, has said is that there is, and it fits with previous research that's been done on, you know, by UFO people, is that there is something like a uh, network of uh, essentially like evangelical Christians in the military establishment who think that whatever these things are, or if it represents some alien intelligence, are, are demonic. So they're coming at it from a, a religious point of view. I think that in some ways that, you know, the bigger stakes of this, this debate and this story are um, sort of the same as have, have plagued, um, you know, scientific leaps through time, which is, you know, the idea that it, is humanity the center of the universe. 
But I think our, our, sci our science still does place humanity at the center in a lot of ways that we're not, we sort of take for granted. Um, and this story threatens that. So I think that's part of the institutional inertia against it too, apart from the idea that maybe there's like a Christian cabal <laughs> that is suppressing so, information. That's so <laughs> fascinating. Like a, bu a bunch of Christians up in high levels of government thinking like, damn, we got some serious demons. <laughs> <Yes. lying around."> <laughs> <laughs> or this is like the Admiral man. from Twin Peaks, right? Um, you know, no, but I mean, obviously they're not as, as cool as that character. I mean, you have to, you can only have a military official in fiction as cool as that guy. But um, at, at the same point, I mean, I, I think like, especially if, if we are operating from like the idea that like, okay, UFOs exist and people know about it. I do think that what we've seen, um, is, is a quite frightening example of the US military supremacy over civilian government. Because I honestly, like, I, I like, let's say if, if alien, like they do, the military does have good intelligence that aliens exist and they're, you know, visiting their planet regularly. I don't think they told Trump. <laughs> right? <laughs> I mean, like, I really doubt that they told Trump. Yeah, I doubt that they would have too. I mean, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Trump's spoken. He's like, yeah, I don't really. I mean, like, yeah. obviously, Trump sucks, but like, you know, he's the president, and like, I really can imagine a, a scenario where they wouldn't tell him information like that. Well, imagine if he was the one who was supposed to come out and say, "Hey, this is all real." <laughs> like, nobody would believe it. Yeah. I've seen them with good reason. Look, these guys—they're like eight feet tall. They fly around. Like, <laughs> I can't believe. <laughs>